Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. A panel of intelligence experts in the United States investigating reports of a mysterious illness among diplomatic staff say they may have pinpointed the cause. They've suggested that pulsed electromagnetic energy might be behind the cluster of symptoms known as Havana Syndrome. Here's Gordon Carrera. Since it first emerged in Cuba in 2016, there's been a contentious debate about what's known as Havana Syndrome, with some arguing the symptoms of dizziness and pressure in the head were induced by stress or other social and psychological factors. Last month, the CIA said this accounted for many of the cases, and this latest assessment finds that pulsed electromagnetic energy, or perhaps ultrasound from some kind of external device, plausibly explains some of them and it said a concealed device may have been able to send the energy beam through walls. The United States is deploying more than 3,000 troops to bolster the defense of European allies, the first major movement of U.S. forces in Russia's military standoff with Ukraine. Russia's foreign ministry has called the U.S. deployment an unjustified and destructive move that increased military tensions. Barbara Pletusha is in Washington. These troops that they're deploying do have combat punch, but the deployments, I think, are more symbolic than anything. And they had been previewed already last week. So what the administration is saying is that they're wanting to reassure their NATO allies in Eastern Europe who are worried about these Russian troop movements near, near Ukraine could spill over their borders. And those states did request reinforcements, so they're responding to a request. And then more than that, um, what the Pentagon and the administration is trying to do is send a message to President Putin that it's taking its responsibilities with NATO very seriously and that if Mr. Putin makes any move towards NATO allies, there will be resistance. The French President Emmanuel Macron has said he would speak to President Biden by phone Depending on the progress of their discussions, he said he might travel to Moscow in search of a diplomatic solution to the crisis. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz says he's already agreed to meet Mr. Putin. Officials in Argentina say at least 12 people have died and another 50 are in hospital after taking adulterated cocaine. A prosecutor in Buenos Aires called the incident unprecedented. Kat Weiner reports. The victims are reported to have suffered convulsions and heart attacks after taking the contaminated narcotics. The authorities in the Argentine capital have appealed to anyone who has recently bought cocaine to throw it away as a precaution, saying it was clear there was a highly toxic substance in circulation. They say they are waiting for laboratory results to determine exactly what the cocaine was mixed with. On Wednesday, police raided homes in a poor neighbourhood close to the capital where they believe the cocaine was sold and arrested several people. World news from the BBC. The Serbian authorities say the coronavirus tests submitted by the tennis champion Novak Djokovic at the Australian Open tournament were legitimate. The prosecutor's office said there had been no manipulation of evidence, as suggested by media reports. A BBC report last week cast doubt over the tests, suggesting the serial numbers on them were out of sequence. The world number one player was deported on the eve of the tournament over vaccination issues. Shares in Facebook's parent company Meta have plunged more than 20% in after-hours trading in response to lower-than-expected profits for the last quarter. For the first time, there's also been no growth in monthly active users. Samira Hussein reports. The owner of Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp said it was plagued by higher inflation and supply chain disruptions, which hurt how much companies paid for adverts on its platforms. And for the first time in Facebook's history, it has not increased the number of monthly active users in this last quarter. It's a worrying sign since Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg only last month described serving young adults as its North Star. The government of Guinea-Bissau says 11 people are now known to have died in Tuesday's failed attempt to overthrow President Umuru Sisoko Embolo. Civilians are among the dead. A major investigation has been launched to find the unidentified gunman. The army has been patrolling the streets of Bissau, while the area surrounding the scene of gunfire remains closed off. Guinea-Bissau is a hub for cocaine trafficking between Latin America and Europe, and many have wondered if the coup was the work of drug gangs. Football and Senegal are through to the final of the Africa Cup of Nations. They beat Burkina Faso 3-1, All the goals came in the final 20 minutes. Senegal will now take on either Egypt or Cameroon in Sunday's final. That's the latest BBC News.